Oh, can you share it in Facebook while I do the intro? And hello, everyone. I think we're live. Um, welcome to the League of Extraordinary Atheists for Humanism, or the Leah Podcast, where we apply rationality to religion and politics, or at least we try to. Um, I'm Matt Clark, the Gray Skeptic, and this is my co-host, Christy Santiago. Hi. Hi, Hi Christy. And how are you doing tonight? I am doing excellent. How are you? Very good. Um, we are only like two and a half hours late for the stream, which is no big deal, if you really think about it. Um, so thank you everyone for being patient, or um, thank you for going to bed and not waiting too, too long for us. Uh, but we hope that you are catching this uh, at some point tonight or tomorrow. Um, we'll share this out a couple times um, on Twitter and Facebook to make sure everyone has a chance to see it. Um, but we are sorry for all the technical difficulties and the delay. Um, we have Nacho Witness helping us um, do this stream because uh, neither I or Christy are competent enough to <laughs> do the live stream portion of this show ourselves. Um, so big, big shout out to Nacho Witness. Thank you so much. Also, thank you, Nadine, for helping us set this up as well. <clears throat> And also, one more shout out to my wife, Lindsay, um, for making this wonderful full border um, for the show that we have because it's super duper cool. And um, I could not have put this together without her. So, yeah. thank you, everyone. There's our thank yous. And now we can go ahead and get on to our second show. Yeah. Uh, so, um, First things first, uh, we have some recent events that we're going to cover before we get to our main topic tonight, which is Israel and Palestine. Um, but we have some other um, less than cheerful <laughs> things to talk about before. So first up, the Supreme Court has refused to hear cases trying to stop Medicaid funding to Planned Parenthood. Though this is good news, that does leave... Um, it at the discretion of lower courts to decide to cut off spending at state levels. Um, Louisiana and Kansas are the states currently trying to get this funding cut. Uh, federal funding, if you didn't know, is already banned from paying for abortions, um, except in rape and incest cases, and when it endangers the woman's life. Um, but in 15 states, um, they do pay for abortions through the Medicaid program. And I know Christy has more to say on this. Yes, they actually do. Um, those 15 states, to put it in a, for instance, if a woman has a, a tubal pregnancy, which you cannot carry that to term, there's nothing a woman can do. If she is in one of these liberal states that does let their citizens accept that Medicaid funding, and she needs to have that procedure done, and she is covered also by Medicaid, then yes, that is something that would be covered for her. We have to get it so that it's a nationwide coverage for every woman that would experience such a horrific situation. Yeah. And also, the Monday rebuffed efforts by states to block funding to Planned Parenthood, but it left in place to lower court opinions that Mac just said. Um, this, What they said was that states violate federal law when they terminate Medicaid contracts with Planned Parenthood affiliates who offer preventative care for low-income people. It would have taken four justices to agree to hear the issue and only three conservative justices, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, and Neil Gorsuch, did, however, vote to hear the case. But Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Brett Kavanaugh appeared to side with the court's liberals and not taking up the case. I hope that it's just not something that he is avoiding to um, kind of like avoid a high profile abortion case right after all his court cases. I hope that this is something that will stay, but either way, I will take it. I will take it either way. It's good news for now on something I thought I, I waited for with my breath held. So it it's good news. Yeah, we kind of expected the worst and like yeah. for good reason. 
Like, it's been a shit show in Washington, D.C. Absolutely. And I, as I am surprised to hear that Brad Kavanaugh agreed with the liberals. Um, I, 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 too, can see that, you know, maybe he's just trying not to rock the boat any more than he already fucking has. He's like, I'm already in a canoe with a bunch of holes in it, so I like beer. Um, <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> that's sad. Uh, the next thing I think we'll move on to is Christy has more to say on um, the prison system, actually. Yes, I do. <coughs> Excuse me. Out of 50 white American men, three out of that 50, or one out of 17, will go to prison. Out of the same number of black American men, 16, or one out of three, should expect to go to prison in this country. Black American men are seven times more likely to go to prison in this country. And right now, there are over 2.3 million Americans in all of them. It doesn't matter the race. It doesn't matter the 2.3 million Americans are in our prisons and jails. That's more than any other country on the planet. And considering we're 5% of the world's population and we have 30% of the world's jailed, that doesn't compute to me. Um, I started to wonder how this happened. So uh, one article after another after another, I kept finding debtor's prisons or what, what could be considered a debtor's prison which are supposed to be illegal in this country, come to find out. In Alabama, over 1,000 people get locked up every single month for not being able to pay their fines. The New York Times had the headline, and I quote, poor land in jail as companies add huge fees for probation. And the, the article stated that those arrested are not told about their right to counsel or asked whether they are indigent, indi indigent sorry, or offered alternative to fines in jail. There are real constitutional issues at stake in every article, every company that, company, every journal, um, journalistic company that, that I sought out information from, including the Associated Press, including Al Jazeera, including, yeah, there are six of them. They all say the same thing. These are constitutional issues that are just kind of being negated just Nobody's paying attention to them because people are making money. And there are a few states that have started taking legal actions, but until those make it through the courts, there's going to be debtors' prisons. And also, it's a good idea, or a good idea, it's great news that New York Times was talking about a state at the other end of the country, Alabama. It just shows that there is, um, there's light being shed on it. That's kind of what I wanted to spit out and couldn't. <laughs> Fair enough. And you said who is trying to um, uh, press charges right now? Uh, right now in Alabama, that's where it's been hit the hardest. And there are, right now, legals, legal proceedings that have started. I don't see them. We're not going to see the end of those anytime within the next year or two. It's going to take some time. Yeah. Yeah. Everything important tends to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I will, uh, I will touch on this every time we have, uh, you know, not maybe not every Leah episode, but I will keep track of this and I will come back to it to see what has been yeah. done about debtors' prisons. Great. Um, and I just want to go um, over a, a, a little bit what we were talking about be before we started this this stream is um, right. <laughs> the cause of this issue I think is really easy to see. Um, so, and I don't know how much our viewers are, are into this kind of news. Like we're covering some topics that we don't see in the mainstream media very often. <laughs> so um, it's pretty clear to Christy and I that this issue spawned from capitalism actually and we're all for capitalism um but right. capitalism of the wrong things like healthcare and the prison systems yeah. um we both feel like these 
these are things that really should be government funded. They shouldn't be a capitalistic game. This <laughs> this shouldn't right. be an industry and imprisoning people because it's just it's 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 really easy to point out the flaw. You have you have an industry for prisons. So you have people getting paid to put people in prison. And if you have people getting paid to put people in prison, you, then you have lobbyists. You have people paying politicians to get more people in prison. So then those politicians will help change the laws, um, which get more people in prison. <laughs> and you can okay. see in, in the 70s, uh, Kristen and I just both watched a documentary because she sent me everything she watches and I watch most of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in the 70s, they changed the laws to where um, the, the, the attorneys, like the prosecuting attorneys, have more power to get more people in prisons um, than, like, the judges do. Like, they have more say in the trials because of the, what do they call them? The mandatory, mandatory minimum. Mandatory minimum. A lot of states have done away with those draconian, bare-knuckle mandatory minimums. But our Jeff Sessions was behind that documentary, not behind the making of that documentary, but the making of those draconian laws. Mm -hmm. That's something he stands for, he is okay with, and he wouldn't mind bringing back mandatory minimums. I think they're deplorable. And Hashtag there's no not for Jeff them. Sessions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she she she's right, and it's really easy to see. Um, we really encourage everyone to look up everything that we say. Don't just take what we have to say um, at face value, because um, we try our best to do a lot of fact checking, and we're also trying to like we're we're giving you these these facts, and we're also trying to give you our opinions, but let you know. When this is our opinion, right, and absolutely. we we are giving you our opinion on on the causes of this problem right now, but they are very fact based. Um, yeah. so do like do your due diligence and like look this stuff up a little bit. And if you want any sources, um, please ask Christy or I. Mostly Christy, she's got all the sources because um, I, I get most of mine from her. Um, but I will be um, linking in the description box below. Um, my my sources from these stories tonight. Um, as as soon as the um, stream is over, so you guys won't have to worry about that. Um, Associated Press. Associated Press. That's 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 the best. Um, if, Associated Press. Yeah. If if anyone would like a a news source bias chart, uh, you can ask me directly, and I can send you a couple of those. Um, and I can send you a couple that are completely different from each other, and yeah. you can tell pretty quickly. <laughs> you can tell pretty quickly which one's more accurate. Accurate. <laughs> so there, there's that. Um, uh, do you have anything else to say on this topic, Kristen? No, we're good for right now. Okay. All right. So moving right along to another fun first topic. Yeah. On the Catholic front. Um, the Roman Catholic Diocese of Syracuse released a letter on December 1st, 2018, reminding everyone that what is important this year is to prepare yourself for the coming of Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> for the last 2,000 years, it could be any fucking day now. Um, <clears throat> the letter promptly changed gears calling back attention to the church's failings, in quotations, um, since the grand jury report in, Pens in Pennsylvania came out. You know, that one that named 301 yeah. um, um, predator priests um, that um, had to, the, who had dealings in either some form of sexual misconduct or straight-out child rape. Um, and Anyways, for that diocese, right. with that letter, they even released a list of 
57 names of confirmed predator priests, which was unexpected. This is great. Though it's late, it is it's, it's great. They're, they're actually taking a few proper steps and making things public and actually taking a little bit of um, I don't know if I call it responsibility, but they're but they're owning up to it, right? Right. So um, that's what happened in Syracuse on December first. But there have been 115 names released in five other states: Michigan, New Mexico, <coughs> excuse me, California, New York, and Georgia have all released um, a total of 115 names, um, and those are all confirmed. Predator priests, and also the Jesuit provinces, provinces, if I can say the words, um, the USA Central and Southern Province, and the Jesuits West, they release names of more than one hundred and fifty members yep. of of the order, with in quotations, with credible allegations of sexual abuse of a minor. End quotes. Um, so, between those three numbers I named, there are almost 300 um, predator priests who were named in these letters that were sent out. I think it's uh, like uh, 292, if I'm doing the math right. Um, check that, too. <laughs> um, but that's, that's almost 300 priests that they just put out there and a lot of them are dead a lot of um, most of them are not in the church anymore but this is a good first step and that's that is right. what we were asking for was a yeah. good first step yeah and, a little uh, bit of transparency yes like please um <laughs> so i'll end on this note on um, this reminder is that this was not the wishes of the vatican as they have instructed American bishops to do nothing until the new year, because nothing helps like waiting for things to blow over. Yep. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, before we move on to the main topic tonight, I would like to remind everyone that these, um, these topics that we want to cover on this show are topics that you really don't hear about in mainstream media. Um, and then we want to give our humanistic um, input. We want to try to um, share our values and like try to give solutions. And if anyone wants resources on how to make these um, solutions come to like fruition, like you know, call your senators or ask Christy and I what to do in each case, and we'll do our best to try to help you um, go in the right direction. The um, help change happen. But the single most important thing to help any of these topics is to know about them, is to speak about them. So that's what we're trying to do. It's like, let you know, because we have a big skeptical audience, um, which is also very, very proactive. So we're trying to let you guys know, because we feel like you guys will care and do something about it. So if there's any stories that you really, really like hearing about, um, let us know. And we can make it a main topic for, for a night, right? So just give us your feedback. And uh, also give us your rebuttals, if you have any. And uh, with that, right. Christy, on to you. Main topic tonight. Yeah, I want to take us back to the Battle of Gaza to give us a little... Um, a little bit of history on the the atrocities and current news going on in this area. The Battle of Gaza is also referred to as Hamas takeover of Gaza. It was a military conflict between Fatah, and I might be pronouncing all of this completely horrible, so my apologies in advance, but between Fatah and Hamas that took place in the Gaza Strip between June 10th and the 15th of 2007. This was a prominent event in the Fatah-Hamas conflict. It centered on the struggle for power after Fatah lost the parliamentary elections of 2006. 
Hamas fighters took control of the Gaza Strip and removed Fatah officials. The battle resulted in the dissolution of the unity government and the de facto division of the Palestinian territories into two entities, the West Bank governed by the Palestinian National Authority and Gaza governed by Hamas. As a result of the battle, Hamas got complete control of Gaza. The pro Fatah view is that it was a straight up military coup by Hamas. The pro Hamas view is that the U.S. drew a drew up a plan to arm the Fatah cadres with the aim of forcefully removing Hamas from power in Gaza. So Hamas preemptively took control over Gaza. However, Islamic law, aka Sharia law, was imposed in Gaza. And Gaza soon announced the opening of a military wing to enforce Muslim law in Gaza, saying, and I quote, I expect our Christian neighbors to understand the new Hamas rules and that it means real change, end quote. Oh, no, not end quote, sorry. And that it means real changes. They must be ready for Islamic rule if they want to live in our Gaza in peace. The guy who said that, his name was Sheikh Abu Sakir, S-A-Q-E-R. The sole Christian bookstore in Gaza was, shortly after that had been said, attacked and the owner murdered. So... That's a little backup as to how Gaza got taken and is controlled. Because my heart is so torn because I, there's atrocities going on there that should never be allowed. And I also have people that want to tell me, how can you be on their side if they are terrorists? And I don't believe that the mass of the people are terrorists. I believe that Hamas is. And so, yes, helping them would help them by de facto. But I, you can't hurt people because you want to hurt leaders. So there's that. And then the Great March of Return I wanted to touch on is a protest that happens every year and starts on March 30th. This protest is a commemoration of Land Day. It's, an, it's a call for Palestinian refugees' right of return to their lands, villages, and homes from which they were removed to make way for present-day Israel. They are also protesting the strict blockade imposed on the Gaza Strip for more than a decade. Ten months have passed since the beginning of a massive wave of protests organized by the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. But in just the first six months of those protests, 101 Palestinians were killed, including 28 children, one woman, two journalists, three paramedics, and three disabled people. Another 9,970 were injured, including 1,815 children, 419 women, 114 paramedics, 105 journalists, and of those injured, 5,000 645 were hit with live fire, including 919 children and 113 women. The Israeli soldier, one, has died after being shot on July 20th, 2018, during the protest. So that just gives you a few numbers. <sighs> That's a lot of numbers. The pictures from this, yeah, the, the, a lot of numbers, but yeah. That's what I could find. And that's, no, yeah, that's... You know, that's if that was happening here, it, it would... We had Native Americans protesting a pipeline, and when stuff started to get out of hand and people started to get hurt, our own vets who served started showing up to say no. So I can't imagine something like this happening here right. because too many people would get involved to shut it down. But nobody's doing that there. N no. Nobody. Yeah, there's there's a lot of hatred between between the two groups. And I, I'm not saying I have answers. I don't have answers. But as a humanist, I can't see what they are doing as the way. It can't be the way. Noam Chomsky said there are three choices. What they don't know is that they've already chosen one. One choice is 
a pie in the sky. Everybody lives happily under one country like America did. That's their pie in the sky. It's never going to happen. The second right. one is a, is a two-state solution, which if you go and you pull up the records every year where all the nations vote, Every nation votes for Palestine to have their own state except for the U.S. and Israel every single year. Yeah. So there's that. But what Noam Chomsky, and I love the way he talks about it because he says, but there is a th They've already made it. It's to keep doing what they're doing, to build these hard lines everywhere in the country where these people have to past and go through and you know you make it so intolerable that after a hundred years they're just defeated and their hopes I'm sure is that they will have a lot like we have reservations where there's a lot of desperation and I don't think that that's a good answer either I don't know there's too many children there that how can they just on the bear let's go and let's let's pretend we are um, on the religious right what you're doing by saying Israel deserves the right to be there you're negating the right of the other people to be there so all you're doing is creating future problems even terrorists like the whole thing is just so convoluted and I don't know an answer for it. Sorry, I've rambled on. I care deeply about okay. this topic. It's okay. And, um, uh, I'm just going to throw two no cents answer. in real quick. Yeah. Um, um, one thing I want to uh, make clear, just uh, just in case uh, we have any um, Native American listeners, um, because you, you mentioned that, you know, like w one of the choices that Noam Chaw... I can't say his name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can spell it. I don't know how to say it. Um, is that a, um, the pie in the sky option, right? Yeah. That, you know, we, you know, we just learn how to live with each other. Um, but, like, we only did that after we, like, murdered 500, what, yep. million? Yeah, 500 million, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 500 million yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. So, like, For, we kind of did kind of didn't do that but yeah. um but that's that's that that is kind of what they're doing like i feel like eventually that's going to be the option that they land on after they commit more atrocities and something that you and i have talked about um is that gaza's a hellhole right it's it's literally yeah. a city prison and yeah. um, they have entire families um, and co and communities locked up in this city of Gaza. Um, and Hamas is the ruler or whatever. And he's, yeah, he's a bad dude. Um, and a lot of the people in that city probably can't be trusted to come out, right? Because there's a yeah. lot of hatred to, like... If you let that cat out of the bag, that those cats are going to blow up, <laughs> like um, probably literally. But keeping them locked up isn't going to help either, because all they're doing is keeping that hate fueled like a fucking star, like it's burning up as fuel and it's fucking condensing, <laughs> and it's like it's going to explode. Uh, someday or they're going or they're going to solve the problem in an awful awful way that's the only way they'll just have to fucking kill them all and we don't want that either because now you've told me it's a highly populated um yeah dense area it's one of the, one of the most populated areas on the planet gaza strip yeah. do you do you remember any near number? No. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's huge. If if um, if they keep them imprisoned, then it keeps fueling the hate. They like they really need to come to some kind of peaceful agreement, and they need to do it with not only arms like wide open or any kind of like fake show shit. They need to, like, 
own up to the bullshit they've already, like, Israel's, like, committed and are still committing on the, um, which side? Gaza. Um, oh, if you're the, looking at it, it's going to be on the left on the west side. On the, okay. the West Bank is actually on the other side, which... The West, yeah. Yeah, I was actually tr trying to think of the, the uh, West Bank, because mm -hmm. yeah. they because tr they treat them like shit, too. Yeah. Um, um, if you look up Abby Martin and Israel, um, you, see, you see a lot of things that you wouldn't want to see that America allows. Like, they literally kidnap kids for crowd control. And that's pretty shitty. We back that up. You, me, we allow that to happen um, by not getting yes. on, I think it, on our senators. It's you, $11 you million dollars in our tax money. Go, go think about that. What about now? Is that a little bit better? That's better. Yeah, can okay. you repeat that, though? Yes, I think it's eleven million a day of our country's tax money goes to Israel. So just ponder on that one. That's a lot. <laughs> That's right. Too much. And the the population of Gaza in twenty fourteen was right under two million and it's a very small area. And it is expected to be over two point one million in twenty twenty. Yeah. And that's um that's a lot of people to have in a city prison. That's a lot of people right. to have. Um, and like I said, we're just They're not, not allowed that. wheelchairs. Yeah. 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 That. The hate, There's, the wheelchairs, the, they can't have crutches. And I don't care if their leaders are, are terrorists. Let's just grant that. Let's just grant it. I don't give a flying that a crippled person or a child or an elderly person. I don't care who it is, girl, boy. If they need a wheelchair, give them a wheelchair. If you're right. scared that they're going to tear it down and make a weapon, you're the problem. You're the problem. Like, I right. don't know how else to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Because... We treat our prisoners better than that. Like, we still don't treat them very well, but they're, they're still humans, right? And that's what, that's, that's, that's what we are. You know, we're, we're humanists. If you're, if you're going to leave someone alive, treat them like a human, right? If they're that bad, th now this is, this is me speaking, this is my opinion. If they're too much of a harm to leave in any kind of human society then I would say it's, it's probably fair enough to invoke the death penalty. You know, there are some cases where I think that's okay. Um, but if it's not, if it's not okay, then I think you need to look at humanistic solutions. You need to look at not just imprisonment for anyone who's awful, rehabilitation. That's always the if someone can't be rehabilitated, then I think you need to look at other options. Maybe prison for life's the option, but that seems more cruel and unusual than death, even, to me. I don't want to rot for 80 years. I think I'd rather die. Um, so that's my opinion, again. Um, and I want to make sure I... I say when my opinion's being <laughs> put up and not facts. So um, if anyone wants to chime in on that part of the conversation too, please do so in the comments below. But Christy, go ahead and move on. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, it's fine. Um, no, I agree. I agree with almost every single thing you said. I am 100% without a doubt anti-death penalty. But I've never been in a position where I had to make a decision on another person's life. I would never put myself in that job. I don't want that job. But as for me, I am anti-death penalty and under any circumstance. However, I think that people like, let's just throw out a famous one, Ed Gaines, 
um, Dahmer, any of these, I don't want to say fascinating because that's, you know, but yeah, their minds are different. Mm -hmm. I think that because we have to keep them, that they should have to be studied. Not evasive, not physical, talking. They should have to be studied. We should mm -hmm. know everything about their mind, even if they're lying all the time. We, we should be able to, over the course of their lifetime, learn about their mind. And it should be up to them. If, we're, if they're condemned for life, and there's without a shadow of a doubt that they're the one, yeah, yeah, have at it. Find out what makes their minds work so we, we can learn as a society to have that knowledge, even if it's just in a book somewhere about that person that will help us further our knowledge. Knowledge is the goal, and humanist values are the way to get there, I think. I think so as well. And you can't solve a problem if you don't understand the problem. So. Right. And I'm not claiming to understand Palestine. I do have a couple friends that live there currently, now. And um, so I do feel like, you know, and my heart aches whenever I hear of things that are going on there. But it would anyway. I don't need to know somebody to cry if they're hurt. And I don't need to know somebody to smile if they're joyous. So I guess I'm just a big old softy. But at the same time, I mean, I, I think that that's kind of what the world needs a little bit more of. A little bit more empathy. <clears throat> I agree. And I think if you're having a hard time swallowing this um, sympathy or this... Um, this empathy or anything that we have for the Pakistani side of things, I want you to ask yourself, how much do you know from their side of the story? Not just that, like, news, about yeah. them, news from them, right? I think, I think it's really beneficial to take a step back and look at the news from a different side. And I think that's really important. And I mean, if you still disagree and um, you just think they're a hundred percent just shit and and, and um, <laughs> lower animals, then I suppose you know more like more power to you. At least you looked at the evidence. But right. that's what we do skeptics, right? Is we try to look at all the evidence. Yeah. Well, some more than I others. Do. That's what Christy does all day. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't do it as much as you do, but I appreciate the yes. information. I have been told by some of my friends, not to mention Brant's name or anything, that I should probably try to send good things sometimes, too. Not so depressing all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But I just can't, when I find something out that fascinates me or about the world whether it's now or in the past that I didn't know, I can spend hours learning everything that I can about it. And this is just one view. This is just from the Gaza Strip's view. I didn't even get into the West Bank. And it wasn't even a, a comprehensive view. It was just a touch on, you know, maybe start a conversation. Maybe people will look up Palestine. There is an... Um, we, I'll get back to you with the information for it. If people want to become pen pals to people in the Gaza Strip, there's a way, which is a great way to reach out to people. And um, I'm sure that there are people in Gaza that are atheists that are too scared to come out, and it would be cool to find out that, I, I mean, I don't know that they're, they're pretty locked down on what they can see, view, and read. So, you know, it would have to be through a pen pal. And, and their mail does get opened, by the way. So don't send anything that you shouldn't be sending because they will they open it first. Mm. Yes. I don't know. It's a tough situation. When you said let's do Palestinian, Palestine and Israel, I was like, oh, it's such a tough one. <laughs> yeah. But that, just, that just, just means to me that my apprehension means that it, it needs to be talked about. It does. Because That's if the only reason I would be scared to talk about would be because I don't want to cause whatever it might be is a good reason to talk about it. So 
talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you have any more on this top, like on your main topic to go over? I, I, I feel like I stopped you mid midway because there's so much to cover and I don't know. Yeah, there's, you... there's tons. There's tons. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, would you mind um, kind of sharing a few of your sources for this? Because I know you've sent a lot of Abby Martin my way for this because she covers right. Israel-Palestine conflict like no one else I've ever seen. All of and she's the, fucking the, hated for it. But it's, it's all right. such material. From the Battle of Gaza was all just doing history. You can do um, type in Battle of Gaza. It's going to be the same story everywhere you look because it just is. It's not an opinion piece. Okay. Um, and it will be word for word, even more in depth. The Hamas side actually got a whole bunch of documents that were from America on accident or on purpose, I'm not sure, that did say that we were going to overthrow or help there be some sort of a coup, and they used it as propaganda. It's a big story. So the Battle of Gaza, I mean, you can look up on Wikipedia, um, type in Battle of Gaza on just Google, and it'll give you all the information. And then for all of the information about the Great March of Return, I got between Associated Press and Al Jazeera. And that's it. Dig it. <laughs> cool. Um, does anyone have any questions for us on any of these topics that, that, that we had tonight? We'll wait a couple of seconds and see if I'm anyone... sure everybody's so tired. <laughs> Thank you yeah. guys for coming. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, please, if, if, if you would, please share this out. Um, uh, go on Twitter, go on Facebook, share it with friends. Share it with your foes. <laughs> Get us some views. Um, because I feel like this episode's gone really well. I'm very proud of this. Um, I'm very proud of the show. And I'm very proud of Christy for all the work she's, she's put into this. Not to mention um, our people in the background. Nacho Witness and Nadine. You guys have... Nacho Witness. Yeah. Yeah. I would have given up in the first down. I yeah. <laughs> like after last time, I could not do yeah. it. Yeah, you're like, uh, uh, uh hang out. Let's just do hang out. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. Um, but I'm sorry for all the yawning that I've been doing during the stream. None of this is boring <laughs> to me. Um, I just have a I have a full night of work ahead of me yet, and I haven't slept much today. And he's and, late for work. I, yeah, I'm like four hours late for work almost now. So you're such a naughty boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I'll share a few. Uh, oh my gosh, Brantley! <laughs> hey, Brantley. Yeah, share it with some anti-Semitic people, please. Um, so again, um, I think that pretty much concludes our show for the night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. Uh, not yeah. to uh, get ready. We'll probably end the stream here in a few. Um, but um, again, thank you. Please share this out. Please like. Please subscribe. I am almost to 300 subscribers. So stoked. Thank you for everyone who's uh, subscribed recently. Um, and before, thank you. Um, <laughs> we'll probably do one more show on my channel for sure after that we may start um putting these episodes on our our uh, new channel yes uh but we do have a twitter uh that i made earlier today and that was banned as soon as i made it i think it was oh, no. yeah it was but um i got it all all figured out and it's reinstated and we're all fine now so I have followed many of you guys already on Twitter. If you haven't seen me, uh, go ahead and look up League of Extraordinary Atheists for Humanism. <laughs> and, um, I think right now it's um, it's at... Oh, I can't remember. Let me look it up real quick. <laughs> yeah, link it. Mm. 
Uh, pop it up yet. There we go. I didn't. I wasn't able to change the at for some reason. I think probably because the um, the account was locked. But it's um, at of atheists for, for right now. But uh, yeah. So go ahead and follow us there. Uh, check out our Facebook page. It's a group. Uh, you can find it through me or Christy. We're both a part of it. I'll follow us there, keep in touch, and let us know what you think of the show, and let us know what you would like to know more about, and we'll do our best to get that on our show. Um, again, we do this about every two weeks, um, so we'll see you again here in a couple weeks before the new year. Everyone have a Merry Christmas. We love you guys, and thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Bye.